Loblaw. Are you kidding me? No. I told you. Yeah, stop. right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Oh, man, how'd you guys get in? So good morning. It's great to see everyone. Yes. All right. You guys look terrific. At least the top part of your heads look wonderful. So that's good. It's good. Hey, a uh, couple real quick things. Um, I was on the backstage, so I didn't actually hear. Uh, did Eric mention that next week we're going to do 9, 15, and 11? Yes, did he say that? Okay. Um, all right, and then also, too, want to thank uh, Heath and the worship team for filling in for Eric. Uh, they are on vacation, and so they'll be back here soon. And so pray for Eric and Yvette and the kids, all right? So let me share with you a little bit about where we're going and what we're going to do today. So I think I added up, I think there's 27 weeks that we missed, so times 40 minutes, so you guys should be leaving by Wednesday. So I hope you brought a snack, right? And uh, everything should be fine. And so uh, anyway, here's where we're going for the next couple weeks. And you guys probably know this. Um, the statistics show as far as um, what's taking place psychologically in, in America is pr it's pretty devastating. Uh, divorce rate is up 34% from a year ago last year. So normally around January, divorce rates go up through the holidays. And so they looked at uh, September, August and September of last year, a year ago. So divorce rates for people filing for divorces up 34%, which is a huge, huge number. Um, depression is through the ceiling. Uh, illegal drug use and legal drug use is through the ceiling. Alcohol, people who are recovering addicts falling off the wagon through the ceiling. Suicide rates in some, in some uh, areas are up 400% of it. And so, you know, I always, I feel like, I, I shouldn't say this. I, the scripture teaches us that the church is the hope of the world. Right, And I think that oftentimes that it comes in moments like this where the church needs to speak into the world in which it lives in. And so this series, we're going to deal with relationships, and we're going to look at five weeks of relationships. We're going to make it kind of simple. We're going to hopefully give you one skill each day to leave in order to have better relationships, all right? And then in uh, five weeks, six weeks from today, we're going to start a new series on hope, and we're going to be looking at um, the miracles of Christ and the reason why he did the miracles wasn't to kind of wow people, to show off his, his talent and his power, but it really was to bring hope into a community that he was the Messiah. And so we'll be looking at that uh, here, in, here in a few weeks as well. And so that's kind of where my heart is at. I think it's important that we recognize, um, you know, all the stuff that's taking place at the end of the day, that Jesus is the hope of the world, and the church has been given the task when he, as he left, he said, therefore all authority in heaven and earth have been given to me, therefore go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so he's given us the task to do what Jesus began. And so that's where we're headed over the next probably 10 or 12 weeks as we move into the fall, all right? So we're, we are glad that you're here today. Hopefully you got an outline. Uh, if you didn't get an outline, you can always uh, fill in the blanks on, on your app and, uh, <clears throat> as, we, as we walk through today. So y'all ready? <laughs> come on. You guys were clapping and singing and hooting and hollering, and I, I come up here and y'all want to take a nap. So sorry, I won't, I won't interrupt you. Shh. So, as we start off and we begin to look at emotionally healthy relationships, I, I want to kind of start off with a question, which is at the top of your outline, and it's simply this. What happens when reality doesn't meet expectations in your relationships? Okay? So, let, let's take it a little bit of a different direction for right now. Have you ever had a situation where you bought the product that said new and improved, and you got it home only to open it up to realize it wasn't new and it wasn't improved? 
right? And then you feel like, this is false advertisement. This is bait and switch, you know, all this other stuff. Because your expectations were that if you bought this, then, you know, whatever was going to take place, it was going to be new and proved and wonderful and all this other stuff. You got it home, you opened it up, and the reality was it wasn't any better than it was before. Maybe it's even worse, right? I remember one time, and this is my first time going to Starbucks, when Brandon, our oldest, who's the youth pastor here, he was like probably, I don't know, maybe 14, he wasn't even driving. Someone gave him a gift card. And so we went to Starbucks in Oakley after it just opened, so we're going to figure out whenever that was. And we pull in, I have no idea about the sizes of the coffee cups, right? He wanted to buy coffee. I wasn't going to buy coffee. So he wanted, he had five bucks. He wanted to buy a cup of coffee. So we pull up and he wants whatever it is. And he calls it, he says, I want a tall. All right. Now I'm used to 7-Eleven and big gulps. (laughs) Are y'all with me on that? So we pull up to the window. This, this person hands out a air quotes, tall (laughs) cup of coffee. And I'm thinking, if that's tall, I'm a giant, right? I'm seven six. So they hand it, and I remember grabbing it out of the window and going, this is like a Dixie cup. They should call it like Dixie cup, right? And I don't know whether he was happy with it, but my expectations was tall, right? Not tall, right? And so my expectations and my reality weren't connecting, Right? Now think about this. In applications and resumes online, those of you who are hiring people, 85% of applications, resumes online are false. 85% of people who fill out their resumes are making themselves taller, <laughs> wink, wink, nod, nod, right, than what they actually are. Cars, if you buy a used car, The Federal Trade Commission, who oversees advertisement from dealerships and and, and car lots on cars, 90% of used cars fall under false advertisement. In other words, they're saying things that that aren't actually true, right? Now, that's the world in which we live in, and we've all bought the new and improved and got the tall and all this other stuff and went, ah, that's a bummer. But how do we deal with that when it deals with relationships? Because it's one thing to buy another cup of coffee or to go and get a big gulp, right? It's another thing to trade in a car that's not working. It's another thing to look at a second resume or whatever the case may be. But what about relationships? What what happens when the reality of the relationships, the expectations that you have in that relationship aren't being met? How do you deal with that? How do you address that? How do you navigate through? And the reality is, is we all have those experiences in life. How do we deal with a friendship that maybe was strong and great before, but for whatever reason, it isn't, right? Or a sibling, where maybe you were very close to that sibling, but for whatever reason, things have happened, and it isn't quite the same. What about a marriage? When you thought about it to be a certain way, but then as you get into it and as you've lived through it, it isn't. How do you navigate through those, those situations? So the next five weeks, we're going to make it simple. We're going to give you one skill to take that you are to take, not the person that you wish were here, right, that you are to take into your life and you're to apply it into your life so that you're able to have healthy relationships, right, so that you're able to have the relationships that God desires Uh, for you to have. So look with me in your outline, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Jesus was kind of pressed and kind of sum up everything, Jesus. Give us a give us a one sentence or two sentence statement, a sticky statement. Jesus says this. Here's what we're to do. We're to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So we're to love, as Christ followers, we're to love God with all of our hearts, all of our souls, all of our mind. And then in verse 39, he, he, he tags on something and he says, and the second one is like this, to love your neighbor as yourself. All right? So as Christ followers, we're to love God with all of our heart and we're to love our neighbors, the people around us, as ourselves. 
one of the roadblocks to spiritual maturity, one of the roadblocks to spiritual maturity is personal immaturity when it comes to relationships. Because that isn't two separate things. They go together, don't they? We're to love God and we're to love our neighbor. So if we love God and we got all that figured out, but we're not loving our neighbors ourselves, we got problems. And so what ends up happening? Spiritually, we begin to just dry up. Because this is both. We're to love God and we're to love, uh, love our neighbors. And so in your outline, the mark of a growing Christ follower is a deepened love uh, for God and a love for people, right? So we're to, we're, we are to do both. And so in this series, here's what we're going to be, uh, we're going to be encouraged. We want you to, which is in your outline, we want you to be brave, we want you to be open, and we want you to be ready, right? So let's be brave, let's be open, and let's be ready. And so the brave part is looking at ourselves. I'm going to finish at the end of it saying this. You cannot change the people around you. You've already tried and it doesn't work. You can only change yourself. And so you have to look at yourself. Today isn't about who didn't show up and I can't wait to get home and tell them to watch online and all this other stuff. This is about you, right? This is about you. And so you have to be brave and you have to be open to the struggles that you have as we walk through the, the series. <clears throat> and then the second thing is, is we got to be open. You're going to have disappointments. You got to relationships that are in trouble and struggling, you got to call it what it is. Stop pretending and, and recognize it, that, the, that they are in trouble. And then last is to be ready, and that is to allow God to work in your heart to make the changes that God desires for you to make. Okay, are you all ready? All right, so now we're going to get going. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about unhealthy expectations. In my premarital class, in chapter 4, we cover expectations that you have in your marriage. And so imagine I got a couple in there, right? They're, they're engaged. They're going to have a mar- uh, get, get married in the future. And so the way it's supposed to work is simply this way. They have a page. It has 20 expectations. And we want them to take it home, and we want them to privately write out what their 20 expectations are. And then when they finish, we want them to switch right? Give it to their future spouse and, and, and uh, give the paper to the other one. And then the person is going to read what their future spouse wrote about the 20 expectations that they have. And on there, there's a chart. And one of them is, there's three letters. One of them is a C, and that stands for, uh, that cinch, meaning, listen, this is like a no-brainer. This is going to be so easy to do. Then there's an S, and that is sweat. That's like, I think I can do it, but I'm not 100% sure. And then the N is, ain't going to happen. No way, Jose, right? It's not going to happen. And so it's interesting when I get them and I start going through. Some of them are heartfelt. Some of them are are very uh, realistic. Some of them are wonderful. Some of them are like, but it gives us a glimpse into their expectation of what their relationship is, right? And so from my perspective as a person leading and then sharing with them, it isn't so much about whether it's, quote, right or wrong, but it gives us a glimpse into what they view, their expectations of what that marriage is going to look like in the future, right? And so it's an interesting way to do it. So we all have expectations, whether it's a marriage that we're in, whether it's a friendship, a coworker, supervisor, a boss, whatever it is, we all have these expectations in our life of the way that it's going, to, the way that it's supposed to be. And when it isn't, that's when all of a sudden we have, we have all the problems. In the book, Imagine, this is what the author wrote. He said, Americans, and he talks about how they have kind of these weird expectations. He says, we believe that compact cars are going to be spacious. Luxury cars are going to be economical. We're going to eat as much as we want and stay thin. We're to move all over the United States and yet be neighborly. We're to revere God and be our own God. And then we wonder why we are missing something in our life. 
right? And, and it's the joke about the company that wants to hire a person that has a lot of experience who's really young. It's not going to happen. You can't have 20 years experience and be 21 years old, right? And so we have that kind of thinking when it comes to the relationships, all right? So let's take a look at, and these are some from the counseling days, uh, just pulling things out over the years as I thought through. So let's look at some unhealthy expectations. The first one is letter A, our unconscious ones, and let me give you a little definition of what that is. The unconscious ones are when we don't even know, they're expectations that we, that we have, that we don't even know that we have them until they go unmet. And then all of a sudden, those expectations begin to kind of surface. So here's one that's happened many, many times through whatever 20 some odd years of doing premarital and postmarital counseling. Dishes. I don't know what it is with dishes. I don't know what it is. Maybe y'all can pull me over and explain it to me. But one person has the expectation that when you eat, you wash the dish, you put it in the dishwasher, you wash the dish, and you put it away, right? And that, that's their unconscious expectation because that's the way, maybe that's the way they were raised. The other person doesn't have that expectation. So they have a meal, They finish, maybe they put the plate in the sink, maybe they don't, who knows, but after a few days, all of a sudden, it's like stack, 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 stack. The person who has the unconscious expectation that all dishes should be washed and put away instantly, the other person's frustrated. It's like, can't you just like wash the dish? And and, and it's it's amazing, folks, how many couples have struggles over the over the dishes. And I'm like, buy paper ones. Let's you know, I'm always looking for solutions, right? <laughs> Throw them away. Get rid of them, right? <laughs> yeah. How about this? Maybe you have an unconscious expectation that your kids should all be A students because you were an A A student. So here's the good news. Now you're the teacher. Make them an A student. (laughs) Right? And if you can't, it's on you. Right? So we have all these kind of weird expectations that we don't even really know, but when they don't go, when they're not being met, I've seen it with, with um, newly, newly uh, married couples where um, maybe the, the, the husband isn't quite handy, but the, the wife's father is like MacGyver on stuff, and she wants her new husband to be like MacGyver on stuff, and he doesn't know the difference between a pair of pliers and a, and a screwdriver, you know, that kind of thing. Are you all with me on that one? Or cooks, I've seen this. Mom is like chef. She's like amazing chef, right? You're the, mother, the mother-in-law, but, but the, new, the new wife, she can't even boil water, right? And so we have these unconscious expectations, and that's why we have chapter four of the book that we use, all right? <clears throat> number, th- uh, number two, letter B, is unreasonable. You have unreasonable expectations and, and, and this is where maybe you have the mindset that you're the type of friend that when someone asks you to do something, you drop everything and you run to their aid. And you expect that for everyone else. And so when you need a ride to the airport or the car lot or wherever it is, you expect them to just drop everything. And, and, and run to it, and yet they don't, and then there's like this unrealistic expectation. I, I watch it this way, where maybe somebody has a gambling issue, an alcoholic issue, drug issue, whatever the case is, they're running short on money, and they need a little help to financially do it, and then the other person finds out that there's gambling or drugs or whatever else, and they're upset that someone isn't meeting the, that need. It's like, well, that's unreasonable. If you, if you got an issue then we shouldn't just keep throwing money at it. We should really kind of address the issue. And so we have, we have issues like that. Letter C, unspoken. And this is kind of the fun one. And that is that maybe you have this idea in your mind, but you've never shared it with anybody. And so you expect them to be mind readers. And we're going to talk about that in a few moments. You expect them to just know what, what your needs are. 
And so when they don't meet it, you're upset, but you've really never shared those needs um, in your life, right? And so you'll use phrases like, well, I thought they knew. They don't. Are you guys still here? When did you guys leave yet? Letter D is unagreed upon, and this is another funny one. Just because you say something needs to get done or some need needs to be met doesn't mean the other person agreed upon it. Are you with me on that one? Just because you said the dishes need to be put away after the meal doesn't mean it's going to happen. All right? Are you all with me on that? So just because you say it doesn't necessarily mean that, right? And so, so you think about it from a friendship standpoint. Just because you invite a friend to a party at your house doesn't necessarily mean they're going to come. Just because you ask a favor for a ride or for someone to go pick up something for you doesn't mean that it's going to happen. Just because your wife puts the hamper in your room doesn't mean that your dirty clothes are going to end up in there. And all the, guy, all the guys said, amen. amen. <laughs> As a nervous laughter rolls across the room, it's like, how did he know? (laughs) So write this down. It's not in your outline. But anger comes from three places. Anger comes from hurt, fear, and frustration. Okay? Anger comes from hurt, fear, and frustration. So when I have unrealistic expectations that are not being met you're going to experience one of the three that's going to lead you into anger or where you start building up walls, all right? You're you're going to have hurt in your life, and, and the person will say things like this, well, if they loved me, they would fill in the blank, right? And what that is is that's hurt. Hurt is surfacing because we have unmet needs that are being met, whether they're legitimate or not, but, but we have unmet needs, and as a result, we're questioning the, person, the person's love, right? And, and then we have the issue where we have fear. Oftentimes, you'll see this happen where all of a sudden something from the past, an experience in the past that was bad, gets kind of shuffled into the current situation, And so you start seeing, well, he acted this way or she acted this way or a friend acted this way and whatever. And so all of a sudden, fear comes in. Well, if it happened last time like this, guess what's going to happen this time like this, right? And so so we end up having fear. And then the last is frustration. And the frustration, if you want to know what you you start saying when you're frustrated, is you, you you, you start kind of tying it all together and it's really kind of a focus on, well, if they really cared about me, then, then they would be doing whatever it is that I'm, that I'm wanting them to do, all right? And, and so this is kind of the medicine of an unhealthy relationship. So then we transition, and we asked ourselves the question, so how do we move into healthy relationships? And the answer to that question is, I have no idea. If you do, you could write a book and make a lot of money. So let's go home. So let's look into scripture about transitioning into healthy relationships, all right? So in your outline, so how do we do this? Number two is how do we move toward emotionally healthy relationships? There are two stops and two starts. Two stops and two starts. The first one is, letter A in your outline, is you stop mind reading, right? You stop mind reading, This is an issue where you think that you can make assumptions, and if I don't want to get into what assume means, you can go home and look that up. You all know what that that is? Okay, don't say it because we're in church. (laughs) Just write the word down and just put little brackets in and you'll figure it out. But we make assumptions because we look at their facial expression. Right? Well, why are they always so sad? How do you know? Maybe they got gas. Who knows? Right? You ever had that? You just kind of, oh. Come on, you have. So we make assumptions about that where we want to read their mind. Now, who knows everything? Who knows everything? 
So when we're mind reading, we are assuming God's position. And that's a dangerous place to be. Now look with me in Proverbs chapter eight, verse, uh, 18, verse 2. A, and say it out loud. Say, you've been wanting to say it all week. Come on. A, finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinion. Right? So a fool isn't looking for information or knowledge. In fact, we're going to see a couple of verses later, and speaking of Ezra, Ezra was a person who longed for information for wisdom, and we're going to look at that in week three. And so the fool is the one that isn't interested in finding out what's going on. They're not really interested in figuring out what's going on. They just want to make assumptions, and they want to air their assumptions, Right? And so in relationships, that becomes a problem because we're making assumptions about the person, which may not even, close, uh, may not even be uh, close to being true. Letter B in your outline is stop making judgments. Right? Stop making judgments. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, verse, uh, uh, verse 1 says this, Do not judge or you too will be judged. For the same way that you judge others, you will be judged and with the same measure you use, it will be uh, measured to you. Verse 3, why do you look at the speck of the sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank, or in the original Greek it means like a tree trunk sticking out of your eye, uh, in your own eye, right? So, so why do we do that? So let me tell you what there is. There's something that's called FAE, all right? And it's fundamental uh, attribution error, I think, is, I think is the way it w- works. So here, here's, anybody ever familiar, you familiar with that? So here's the way it works. All of us have it in us. All of us have it in us. And that is when we're watching someone else and they do something that annoys us, we instantly tag it on to bad character on their part. Okay, so here's a reality. You're driving down Highway 4. Someone cuts you off. That person is a... Don't, it's family-friendly service. Starts with a J. That person is a jerk, right? I heard somebody over here use that other word. We're going to have to kick them out. They haven't been in church in a long time, that's why. So, <clears throat> so that person's a jerk, and instantly, right? And then you think, tell me if I'm wrong, you think California ought to institute an IQ test for a driver's license, and all God's people said, amen. amen, right? And you're certain that that person either stole it or got it from Cracker Jacks. I don't even know if they make Cracker Jacks anymore, right? But they certainly shouldn't be driving. And you instantly take this assumption that the person is a bad person. When reality is, maybe they're just driving down Highway 4 and they thought they had more room. Maybe they didn't see you in the blind spot. Maybe they didn't realize the speed that you were going and they just went over and it was a perfectly innocent mistake. Because the reality is, if you're doing it and you're driving down the road, and you go to turn, you know, turn in the lane or whatever the case is, and all of a sudden, meep, 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 you automatically make assumptions about you, but you don't focus on the bad character part. You focus on the good character part, which is, sorry, I didn't see you, right? And we just want to move on. So in all of us, when someone does something, we're instantly focusing on the bad part of their character. And, and when I've done a marriage uh, seminar, I did the gap. That is, what, what ha- you know, when, when the person says something, and then there's this gap of what happens. And, and what you place in that gap is going to be either filled with grace or judgment. And in relationships, when you're facing judgment in that gap, you're going to ruin the relationship. There's just no two ways about it. And so we instantly go to this idea that it's the worst part of the person and their character flaws. And we need to be careful of. Two stops. Stop mind reading and stop judging. And everyone said, I wish my neighbor was here. Letter C. And that is to start having conversation. 
I wish that I had a dollar for every time that I've asked a person in postmarital counseling, have you ever shared that thought with your spouse or with your loved one or whatever the case is, if it's a relationship stuff. You would be amazed at how many people say, I never have, I just thought they knew. If you don't tell them, they won't know. Now the problem is, is sometimes you don't even know what that need is. Right? So if you don't know what that need is, how do you expect them to know what that need is? Right? It's impossible. And so you need to start having that conversation about what's taking place. This is the verse that I was talking about in Proverbs 18, verse 5. The heart of the discerning acquires knowledge. Right? They're interested in the give and take of what's taking place. The ears of the wise seek it out. Right? And, and so there's this interest in knowing what's going on in the midst. Right? I had a little box. I, it's back there. I mean, if I had a box up here and I just showed you, here it is. Right? If I just showed you the box and I said, guess what's in it? We could guess until Jesus comes back and we would never figure it out. Right? Now, it's not an ice cream cone because you never let ice cream melt because that's a sin that God cannot forgive. <laughs> Just kidding. Right? But if we guess what's in it, we would never know. And the answer is nothing. So in your relationship, if you don't share what's going on in your relationship, they're, they're never going to know. Does that make sense? Make sense? Letter, C, uh, letter D. <clears throat> and that is to start clarifying your expectations. Start clarifying your expectations, and it's the exact opposite of the four unhealthy ways, and we're, we're going to cover that, all right? So here they are. You've got to, the first little fill in the blank, is conscious, right? You've got to figure out what your needs are in your life. Now, I know some of you probably are thinking that I'm crazy, but, but let, me, let me just kind of share with you you would be surprised how many people are unhappy and yet they do not know what they're missing in their life. So if they do not know what they're missing, how is it possible that the relationships around them can possibly know, right? And, and so it, it's, it's, it's frustrating for the other person because they love you, they care for you, and all that stuff, yet if they do not know it's impossible. Side note, guys, pay attention. Your wife's needs are never the same. They're always moving, right? And that's not an insult. That, that's just your wife's needs at 20 is different than when she's 30, different when she's 40, 50, and so on, right? It's the joke, and don't stone me, you, it's like nailing jello to a wall. You can do it, but it just doesn't work very well. And so when we try to meet, uh, if, it's, if you're married, if you try to meet your spouse's needs the same way you did 20 years ago, it's not going to work because that, that need is already gone and passed, right? And so you have to personally figure out what it is in my life that I need. What is it? What am I looking for? Letter, uh, the next one is realistic, realistic, and that is if you are expecting your 10-year-old to do chores, they're 10 years old. They're going to do chores like a 10-year-old. They're not a professional house cleaner, right? And so you have to recognize that if you're training your kids or whatever the case is, they're not you, and you need to be realistic on what, on what, on what that is, right? Does that make sense? Next one is spoken. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Yeah. All right. Spoken, and that is that you clearly state the expectations aloud with words. <laughs> okay? <laughs> we need to make sure that we say it with words. And then the last one is agreed upon. Agreed upon. Remember, just because you say it doesn't mean that it's agreed upon. Right? Just because you say it doesn't mean that it's agreed upon. So what do we do? We stop mind reading. We stop judging. We start having a conversation, and we start clarifying the expectations that we have in our life. And so here's the challenge for all of us in relationships. 
The challenge is that we will not look at ourself, we will look at the other person. And we will think about all the changes that they need to make. And if you've sat with me in counseling, you know that not long after I say good morning or welcome, I say, you cannot change them, you can only change yourself. Right? And that this message is not for them. This message is for you, right? It's for me, right? Personally, in my life. Now, let me give you a verse, and then we're going to go home. Romans chapter 5, verse 5 <clears throat> says this. And hope does not disappoint. And all, all, we all said amen to that, right? Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So here's how I like to say it. We love only because he first loved us. And when you grasp the love that God has for you and that he has poured into your soul, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, only then are you able to take that love and give it out to other people. Only then are you able to take that grace that God has given you and those things that he winks and goes, come on, man. Because of his grace and mercy, are we able to then give it out to other people? And so as we go forward, skill number one, clarify the expectations that you have in your life. If you have a friend issue, if you have a relational with a spouse issue, if you have a coworker issue, there has to be a time where you sit down and you clarify, clearly clarify what it is you're expecting in that relationship to then move the ball forward. Got that? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love and grace. And thank you, Lord, for this time and just the enthusiasm and the excitement. And Lord, we're just so grateful for that. And I pray, Lord, as we move forward and I just... Just sense the stress on the relationships, not just in our church, but all over this place. Uh, relationships are fractured and are hurting and are strained. And Lord, I pray that as we move through with this series, it will just take those little nuggets of truth that you lay out for us and that we'll apply them into our life. Lord, that you will strengthen the relationships that we have, that we'll be able to clearly love the people that you placed in our life because you loved us. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for this Sunday and just being able to gather. And I pray, Lord, as we move forward, that each of our hearts will be encouraged. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. So we're going to dismiss. And so we thank everyone for watching online. There's people watching online. They're listening to you, right? So, so remember, next week, 9, 15, and 11, all right, 9, 15, and 11, and then for those of you that your kids were here today, and it, they, were, they were awesome, I don't mind any of the, the kids are perfectly fine, it's the grumpy people that are complaining, and those are the people I'll throw out, but your kids are being chatty and whatever, I'm totally cool with that, but we are going to be working on trying to figure out a way to either put a children's program in between the two services or do one simultaneously. So we're still kind of working out how that might work out. And so be in prayer for us as we kind of navigate. As Pastor Eric mentioned, look at the emails, pay attention to the blast because that's really how we're going to get the information out. All right. So thank you guys for coming. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless you. <laughs>